Welcome back, everyone, to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy V, the Four Job Fiesta for Tiny Toes Rat Rescue. In our last episode, we had just gotten the submarine. We knocked out the barrier uh, to X Death's uh, castle, but there's some stuff that we can do now that we got the submarine. We went to this village more. We couldn't really do anything here uh, because the forest to the east of Moor, uh, it's blocked off. So we're going to have to find a way to get in there. But one thing we could do at Moor was uh, get an air knife. That'll boost the uh, power by 25% of the Blue Mage's arrow spell. So that'll be really good because in an upcoming dungeon, we can actually get the uh, arrow 3 uh, spell, the most powerful spell uh, in the air, uh, elemental attack. So that'll be good. But first... We're gonna head to this little optional area. We got some enemies we can fight here in this optional area, including getting a new summon. So, we got these guys, Druids. Uh, there's two enemies in this uh, cave, Druids and Ironbacks. Both of them are level 44, so we can get some good use out of that level four quarter spell that we just uh, learned in the Barrier Tower, so. It basically takes the enemies down to uh, one fourth of their health, so it'll be easy to take off, uh, take out after this. And we can hit it with them again and bring them down a little, a little further and yeah, they're basically at like 100 hit points now, so any hit will take them out. So of course you get the sword dance and we don't need it, but that's okay. It's nice if we're able to get an angel ring off them. That saves, you know, like 50,000 gil. Uh, those rings are expensive. The other enemy in here is the Ironback. If you have a, a Tamer, you can catch the Ironback and release it uh, to deal massive damage to a target. Um, releasing it uh, against this optional summon boss here will actually defeat him in one hit. So This guy can be kind of annoying because every time you hit him with anything, he counters with his evil eye spell that uh, turns your character into stone. So like The, the, the goal would be to hope that uh, Lena would cast that uh, X fight when she uses that bow, but and of course uh, Faris is gonna just keep attacking, so uh, can't do anything there. Just hope that she uh, hits hard and uses the uh, maybe gets that uh, the quake th to uh, happen after she swings that Gaia hammer. But just a matter of uh, keeping you know up there. Uh, Keeping your characters from being stoned there, so... And of course we want that, uh, X, uh, thing to hit, so of course it's never gonna happen, so... Because whenever you want something to happen, it's not gonna happen, so... Even though there's a 25% chance that that, uh, X fight occurs every time you use the fight, so... And yeah, this other guy, he sometimes has that drain attack, that can be annoying. Um, I played a little dangerously there, using the arrow spell with Gallop, so... But hopefully I can get most of these characters back on their feet. So, unstone them with their, uh, what do we call it? Now this guy, um, summon, when you use it, uh, it turns the character, uh, the enemy into stone. And you can use it to get the next optional summon that we fight, uh, in, in x Death's castle. You can use this summon against it and defeat it in one hit, so. But, now we kind of learned a little bit about this summon. We were told, I believe in, uh, I think it was in Moor, that one of the guys was like, Hey, uh, I remember I went to uh, this um, forest surrounded by uh, surrounded by mountains, and this thing tried to turn me into stone. Well, that's your, like, clue uh, to basically come here and you know, meet this monster. There's other monsters that are appearing here. We'll uh, point them all out. There's also a chocobo forest in here, but uh, you'll see that we can, unfortunately, uh, get a chocobo to ride in this, uh, in this world. So, we'll see why in just a little bit, so. You can tell there's a chocobo forest, because it's, uh, it's like Final Fantasy IV. It's, uh, the, uh, it's like a round clump of trees. And that kind of designates that, hey, there's a chocobo forest in there, so. Heal ourselves up here. This guy should be almost finished. So. Yeah, too bad here, uh... We don't have anything that can really, uh, hurt him. Uh, you know, like blue magic spells. Like, you can't hit him with that, uh, level 5 death or the, uh, level 4 quarter, so... Oh! And Faris hit him right before we were able to turn, uh, Gallif back into normal, so... 
But we'll just do it here. We only missed out on three uh, ability points, so... It's okay. And there's the... Cat Veloss Summon. And there's a little round forest. We can head on in here. And let's look for a Chocobo. Yep, Chocobo Forest. There it is. There's one running around right there. Quee! Uh-oh. This one's a female. We can't ride her. Yeah, so I guess you can only ride uh, male Chocobos in, in this world. And it's not a black Chocobo, so it can't fly over those mountains, so... If we had a black Chocobo, it could fly over the mountains, but... Yeah. So here's uh, the other three enemies you can meet in this area. We get the land turtle down there. He's the orange turtle, obviously. The cure beasts are the uh, yellow bunnies. And then the detrier is that like bear that looks like he's like tearing a hole in the fabric of space and reality. So... But... Yeah, we'll uh, get into two fights with these guys here. So sometimes you can... Uh, you tend to run into this group. Uh, but you can also run into a group of uh, the uh, de shears, like five of them in a so. But they're not too tough, uh, any of the enemies here, so. Not a very difficult group. Like I said, the Cure Beast, that's the uh, yellow bunny over there. They can drop the uh, elixir, so that's uh, really good, so. You actually get lucky and end up getting uh, an elixir in one of these battles. So. Elixirs, you can't really buy them until much, much later in the game, and like the rings, they're very expensive, so anytime we can get a, a free elixir, that's uh, that's good. So, move our characters back up to the front row here. I put them in the back there just to, for fighting that optional boss, so an optional summon. So we just gotta run into that battle again so we can uh, show off the stats of the uh, Deshuvier. There they are. We stole a potion. Not a very good steal. Yeah, unfortunately, the Cure Beast and the Deshire, they both have uh, rare steals for the high potion, so it's tough to steal from them. But that's okay. Uh, high potions are... It's not as important to steal them anymore because we can't buy them. It was a big deal back in the first wall, the original wall, to try to steal those high potions because... Uh, we weren't able to buy them anymore, and the regular 50 um, hit point restoring potions, they weren't cutting in a lot of those boss battles. You know, we were taking too many turns to heal. Uh, the boss would outspeed our, our healing, and then there's no point in doing that, so. Oh, there, okay, there we go, we got the sword dance. So now we can head back into that cave to head back to our submarine. There we got that elixir drop. Let's head on in here, and we'll just wander around here until we get those, uh, iron back group. And I uh, get lucky, because I get them right away! Here they are! Now, these guys hit like a truck. That's why if you, uh, whatchamacallit, if you, uh, capture one of them with the tamer job, uh, and you release them, they do a lot of damage, because they hit really hard. But, we can, uh, deal some good damage to them with the level 4 quarter spell. So, basically, they have high defense, so basically cast a level, uh, 4 quarter on them, uh, twice. Basically keep them down to like, just over a little bit of a hundred hit points. So then, at that point, uh, you should be able to finish him off with one hit. Yeah, we tempted one there, and he took out his buddy! Nice! Lena could also equip the, uh, the ice bow, if she wanted to, to deal some extra damage. But we gained two levels, Tiny Toe and Ferris. Now we can head into the sub. We can use that free in that the sub has here. And the thing just got to be careful because if you press any button when you first uh, go down those steps, then the, uh, it'll it'll cancel out, and you have to climb back up the steps again and back down them to use the free in. So I wonder how they slept. They're like there's just chairs there, and there's no like ottoman in the front that you know to spread your legs out. It's pretty tough to sleep in a chair, you know, if it doesn't like kind of recline or. You have someone to put your legs and prop them up onto. Mm-hmm. Let's check our map. Okay, Guido's Cave is the, like I said, that flashing dot in the middle. We're very close to it. There it is. And we just enter it, and we get another one of these uh, docking bays. Guido's Cave only has two different enemies in it. These uh, dark aspects here. And then there's another enemy called the Metamorph. 
Uh, the Metamorph is kind of complicated. He's the enemy that you can learn the Arrow 3 spell from. But, uh... Only in certain, uh, forms. See, the Metamorph, uh, what he does is he, uh, he can transform into, uh, nine different types of monsters. Uh, but each of the different forms, uh, there's four different types of meta Metamorphs. And, uh, the first type of Metamorph, uh, will turn into, uh, she can turn into Shiva, uh, Gale Cat, or an Elf Toad. The second form of, uh, the Metamorph can turn into a free, a wyvern, or an enchanted fan. The third form of metamorph can turn into Ramu, Crew Dust, or a zombie dragon. And the fourth metamorph uh, can turn into Shiva, a free, and then Ramu. Uh, so yeah, he can turn into actually bosses. Now even though he turns into those bosses, he maintains his weaknesses here. So, um, for instance, right now he's weak to, he's obviously weak to wind and water because he's a metamorph. Uh, but he, when he turns into these monsters, he basically just inherits their AI script. He doesn't inherit their hit points or their, uh, or their weaknesses. So, yeah, you see he's turned into Shiva. Uh, well, Shiva would normally absorb water, but you can still use, uh, water on him and deal damage because, uh, hit the weakness because he's the metamorph. He's just turning into a different monster, uh, to inherit their AI script. So, he has a really good drop, though, the Staff of Light. You can use that like a, like a rod, and you break it and cast the holy spell. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have anyone who can use uh, staffs. Staffs are used by mainly white mages, so like uh, white mages, uh, time mages, uh, and chemists. Uh, maybe one other class can use them, but nothing that we can't have. So now the metamorph that you really want to fight is the one that. Uh, can transform into a freak, the wyvern, and the enchanted fan. Because the enchanted fan is the one that uh, uses the arrow three, so. I'll probably come back here and farm that spell afterwards if I don't get it. But. So, this is an interesting room. There's a whole bunch of doors that are blocked. And they open up when you put uh, this heavy stone in a certain chest. So, first one you want to do, we only want to worry about the two left chests. So, we want to put the first stone in the uh, upper left chest. And that's going to open up this uh, door up here. We're going to go through that door and we're going to uh, hit a switch. And then we're going to come back into this central room, take the stone out of the upper left chest, put it in the lower left chest, and then uh, that'll open up the doorway to the room where we open up the passage that we're going to open up when we hit this uh, switch in this room. And then when we leave the area, I'll show when I backtrack out of this area, uh, what I'll have to do is, uh, I have to pick up the stone from the chest in the lower left and put it back in the center, because that's the, the stone that was, that's the location of the stone when we first entered this room. So that's the one that opens the door to the exit. So yeah, if you don't have the exit spell, like how my party doesn't, well then you're gonna have to, you know, backtrack out and use the, uh, the, the stone and put it back in the middle. Hey, we got a light staff. Not that we can't use, not that we can use it, so... Galif gained a, another level there, or a, a job level. And Tiny Toe's about to max out Thief, so uh, when Tiny Toe, yeah, oh, the Red Mage can use the staff, the Light Staff too, so... So when Tiny Toe uh, maxes out Thief, we're gonna have to change our job classes around a little bit, so... Remember the Fiesta? You have to have one person in each of the four jobs, so... Gets a little tough toward the end because you're juggling jobs and somebody might have to be put in a job that uh, they've already mastered. So, because jobs they don't, they all, they all don't master at the same time because they have different, uh, certain, they have different uh, amounts of AP you need to to max them out. So, all right. So, see, we have the little hole there in the thing. Well, that's your kind of your clue as to what you're gonna, where you're gonna have to go. But in order to get the stairway to appear there. We gotta sneak down into the lower left here. There's a hidden passage. We push this button, hit it, and the stairway appears. Yeah, it's a very big puzzling dungeon, so just got into a fight there and um, maxed out uh, Tiny Toe. He maxed out his thief, so now he's our berserker, which means that uh, uh, we had to change uh, Ferris out of the berserker class. Uh, but. 
she already was master of the thief job. So I was like, well, let's put Galuf in the thief job because he still has the master of thief. He's the only one who has a master of thief yet. And we'll throw Faris as the blue mage. So basically, uh, everybody switched jobs except for Lena. And she'll be on that job for quite a while. Because it takes uh, 450 uh, ability points, I believe, to max out uh, the final class, the final thing of the, uh, the final skill of the archer job. As you can see, he can turn into, uh, he can turn into bosses. The, basically the level 2 summons, the, uh, Shiva, Afrit, and Ramu. Although he only really, like I said, we're really concerned with the one that, uh, turns into, uh, Afrit. Because when he turns into, uh, Afrit, that's, uh, your indication that, uh, he can potentially turn into the Enchanted Fan. Now, of course, he can also turn into a free, and uh, you just gotta watch. And, uh, cause uh, he can turn into a free in the group that turns into the, into the enchanted fan, or a free can also appear in the group where he just transforms, the metamorph transforms from a free to Shiva to uh, Ramu. So, we follow that turtle into the pond, and hey, there's the turtle right there. What's up, buddy? Huh? What's up with this turtle? Hmm? Don't poke the turtle. Help it across the street. Tiny Toe, stop that! Uh, Tiny Toe? But it's fun, poke, 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 Tiny Toe. Tiny Toe's rat rescue would never tease animals. You shouldn't do that. Would you quit that? Sweet Christmas, it's a talking turtle. Sage, I'm so sorry. Please forgive my brainless companion. Wait, this turtle is the Sage? By the briny beard of Neptune. And you finally catch a clue. Tarnation, Nation, I can't take you anywhere. Well, it's kind of your fault, Galuf. I'll explain when we're done this scene. It's all right, it's all right. No lasting damage. Physically, anyhow. Oh, man, I'm awfully sorry. You should be, boy, picking on defenseless totals. However, we have much to discuss. You mean X-Death? So you're not as slow as you look. But the Warlock Seeks is in the Great Forest of Moor. The Forest of Moor? Trees, my dear boy. Lots of them. Sprawling to the west of Sergei. The sentient forest is X-Death's birthplace. A certain tree in that forest had been used to seal evil spirits for years. 500 years ago, the concentration of evil turned into a dark creature with a life of its own. That creature is X-Death. I maintained the seal on X-Death for 500 years. However, 30 years ago, the seal was broken. 30 years ago, that was when he fought the Dawn Warriors. Yes, don't interrupt. Dorgan and the others fought hard. Finally, they were able to seal the warlock with the crystals. However, somehow he escaped. That was our fault. Aren't we feeling self-important, taking all the blame? Hmm. Had I meant it was your fault, I would have said that. Steels are meant to be broken. It only means that this time, X-Death must be destroyed. Where is he? As I said, the Forest of Moor, something exactly what I do not know, so don't ask, rests sealed in the forest that he wishes to claim. The Forest of Moor. Yeah, we tried to get in there, but we couldn't, remember? It blocks anyone who tries to get in. The Forest of Moor and Zizat's Revenge will defeat X-Death. Let's do it. The Forest of Moor is sentient. It does not take kindly to intruders and will attack all who attempt to enter. Well, that's not true. We let, we entered, but we couldn't get past that one little uh, block. Well, maybe this will help us out. The key to the forest. The Guardian Branch. <laughs> this will open up the pathway to the Forest of Moor. So, now we have a way to get into that dungeon. What is it? Yeah, tell us. Well, I just already explained it. A branch from the Guardian Tree. The tree is what protects the seals. With that branch, you may enter the forest. Thanks. Now hurry, X-Death is right on his way to Moor. Right. I guess X-Death can go in because he's like part tree. You know, he was born out of that tree that held all the evil. But once again, it goes to show that sealing evil away is never a good solution. You have to defeat it entirely. I hate to beg, but I will. Please go to the Great Forest and protect that with S which that which X Death seeks. Ugh, that was a tongue twister. Now we just jump in the pond and we basically do everything in reverse. Spoiler: I unfortunately do not get the uh, the Arrow Three, um, but I will do that off screen between episodes. So because uh, that'll really help out in uh, upcoming dungeons. Now we just uh, make our way out and. We already got all the enemies, so it'll be a quick jaunt out to back to our submarine. So, 
Now, before we head to the Forest of Moor, though, uh, we'll end the episode by heading back to uh, Sergei Castle. Uh, I wonder if the people there found out about uh, Zizat's sacrifice, so maybe we should uh, let them know and maybe we can go check up on our uh, old uh, Windrake there. So, yeah, like here we gotta take the stone out of the lower left uh, chest, put it in the middle, and that opens the way back to the submarine. Now, I was saying earlier, Gallif was kind of, you know, responsible for Tiny Toe attacking, you know, uh, Guido there. Uh, I mean, why don't he just say, like, you know, when he was coming down here, like, okay, you know, hey, we're going to meet Guido the Sage, and by the way, he's a, he's a, um, he's a total, you know? That way it wouldn't come as a surprise, you know? Kind of like, yeah, but sometimes I guess the people just do weird things, they don't think right, you know? The characters in this game, not the brightest bulbs in the, you know, in the package. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer, the brightest crayon in the box. Yeah. Like, uh, Farris said one time, I, I think that guy's operating a few, uh, sailors short of a full crew. So. But let's sail, uh, over here to, uh, Sergei Castle. The domain of, uh, King Zizat. And let them know what happened uh, to their king if they haven't found out already. So, But that's what we'll pick up in our next episode. Thanks for following along. Have a good day. Remember, um, if you want, please support Tiny Toes Rat Rescue. Uh, they do a lot of great work. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.